this is Sueño de Chambi, snapshots for an Andean album. The seven movements, each one is inspired by a photograph. What you see here is a photograph of a Peruvian man of Indian descent looking at what is evidently a self-portrait. This man, his name is Martin Chambi. He is the first Peruvian-born photographer to have gained international acclaim. He was born in 1891. I first came across the photograph of Martin Chambi and I was immediately moved and taken by the pictures, not just for the pictorial content, but for how beautifully they were executed. These pictures provided the direct inspiration for the music. In this photograph, portrait of Miguel Quispe from Cusco, Peru, taken in 1926. We have a man who was a lot like the Peruvian Gandhi. And in his photograph, what he's doing is he's holding coca leaves and he's protesting the ban against coca leaves by the government. This inspired the first movement of my piece. Harawi is a melancholy song form. It is often a love song, but not always, and is often done with just a single kena bamboo flute. There are some quotations of actual folk tunes. And it's so simple and it's so beautiful. In order to catapult you into a totally different photograph, that of the Diablicos Puneños, one thing that I did that I think you see a lot actually in Shostakovich is out of very simple music, suddenly something will rupture, a big moment of passion, of sound. When the piano comes back, it comes back as a drum roll. So imagine that revving up out of a very silent, quiet violin line. You hear this, this, this roar, which can really start small and really grow loud. It needs to sound like devil's music, dance music. And Diablico means devil. I think about the character of the, the devil. I think about what I know of the region of the music. If you look at the photograph of the Diablicos Porneños, you'll see that they have something known as shakapa percussion which are seed rattles that are tied to the leg. And with the piano, how can I convey the idea of seed rattles? This is something that's gonna shimmer or shake and sound. And what I came up with was this sound. And what I have Sham do on the violin is And that's the piano pipe player doing this. So they're scooping across all the pipes. So the combination of everything might sound something like this. But I run out of air right away because I'm a, I'm wigringa. Having a visual can actually enhance in a direct way, not only the music that's created, but how it's reenacted in performance. In the third movement, the Responsorio Lara Marqueño, we have a picture of a father and a son who are shepherds in the highlands of Lara Marca of Peru. And they are uh, piping in, calling in their sheep. And in this movement, what I wanted to do was have a sense of a, of a call and response. Martin Chambi attained the skill of photography from a European man, a European photographer who had come to Cusco and had come to Peru, whose own sons did not want to learn the craft. And there was this Indian kid, Martin, who was hanging around. So he taught Martin the craft of photography. In the fourth movement, the Paadnya Marcha, you'll see women from the Andes who have these very tall, these poles, they're known as bastones and they are demonstrating their agility and their prowess with the poles, being able to throw them up in the air and to hold them in the hands. And because women in the Andes have to carry a lot of things, so they, of course, make music about this. And this is the only dance that I know of by women in Peru that's done for other women. It's not done for a man. It's not done to attract a date or a husband. It's really for themselves. And you look at the picture, 
the all women here. So I composed a, a dance-like type of music for this. In the fifth moment, Adoración para Angelitos, this is the only moment in this entire piece that is just for solo piano. And for dramatic effect, I leave out the violin. And why for dramatic effect? Because this picture of Angelito is a picture of a child who has died. This is a, a picture that was done in the 1920s sometime. And it features a deceased child who is considered a little angel, Angelito, for having died before his time. And children like this that died young would have been laid out on a bed with flowers and candles and religious statues and very ornate veils. And they would have been put on display for a short while. And the photograph that Martin Chambi took of this would have been put on a postcard and distributed to friends and family members. For a more intimate sound, this is a setting of a nursery rhyme. What Martin did was to spend a good portion of his life taking photographs of Peru. And he roamed the coastal areas, which is um, very much a, a desert terrain. It's where you find the most evidence of a Criollo culture or a Spanish culture. As you go to the center of the country, you get to the mountain culture. And this is what most people think of when they think of Peru. They think of Machu Picchu, they think of Cusco. And he took a lot of photographs of, of the Peruanos who lived here too. And he took some, as you go towards the Amazons, he also took some of the, the more jungle cultures. The Harawi de Champi is modeled off the same music that you hear in the first movement, the Harawi de Quispe. The pictures are similar, they're both in profile. Chambi had a habit of putting himself in his own photos. So if he's taking a photograph of a servant helping up a Lima woman onto her horse, it might be him that's dressed up as the servant. Or he might be dressed up as a dashing motorcycle rider in Lima was an Indio. And so I think he would have appreciated the musical disguise as well, the connection that way in being likened to Quispe. Because the music of the Harawi is very somber and melodic, I can't end the piece that way, so I end it on a more festive note with a marinera dance. The marinera is a coastal dance, usually a couple's dance. And in this photo, we have um, musicians that are playing various instruments. So in the first musician over here, he's playing a charango. This guy's playing another type of guitar. The third gentleman here is playing an Andean harp. And these instruments are very interesting. They would also parade instruments. So if he were playing this in the course of a parade, he would turn it up and put it on his shoulder and be playing it backwards. And this last guy here, because this is a posed studio picture unlike some of the others, I suspect that they grabbed this guy off the street. He doesn't look very comfortable holding the violin. To my eye, he looks more indio than the others. He's missing a shoe. And um, it, it just, he's not dressed as elegantly as the other men who are in suits. He has a, a simple shirt or a sweater and what looked like threadbare pantalones there. The challenge I felt with, with this particular work was highlighting another person's work or a culture. There's an extra sense of responsibility that I think you should feel in representing it well. Every note is suffused with that challenge. <laughs>